Picture a city carved into a tree-lined bluff, rising up along the sweeping landscape of a peaceful river. At night, the town's lights sparkle along that dark bluff. From the interstate highways which intersect near its borders, the city appears like an electric oasis set amid the vast surrounding prairie land. The city is LaSalle, Illinois. The first recorded history of LaSalle and its nearby area was written by French explorers Joliet and Marquette. Their discovery of the Native American village, Kaskaskia, across from what is now Starve Rock State Park, was home to an estimated 10,000 Indians, the largest encampment in the United States. Decades later, around the 1820s, the first white pioneers entered the present boundaries of LaSalle County. Approximately five families soon built permanent cabin homes near the Illinois River where the city of LaSalle would evolve. The U.S. outpost, Fort Horn, was constructed about the same time close to the mouth of the Little Vermilion River. Slowly, more settlers arrived to the area from the east and the community began to grow. On January 15, 1831, Illinois Governor John Reynolds signed a legislative bill formally establishing LaSalle County. The township organization law, which divided all Illinois counties into election precincts, was passed 18 years later. Names for those new precincts were mostly taken from the oldest residing settlers. West of the Little Vermilion, Township 33, Range 1, was named Salisbury. That township was changed many times over the next few decades and often subdivided. The precinct named Salisbury eventually became LaSalle and Peru. The tiny village of LaSalle became of vital importance to Chicago and the rest of the Midwest as the Illinois-Michigan Canal was proposed to improve commerce between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi via the Illinois River. Construction on the i &M Canal began simultaneously on July 4, 1836 in Chicago and LaSalle. The canal was opened in 1848 and is credited with helping Chicago become a booming port in the heart of the growing nation. As the city's population grew, proud residents celebrated the Charter of LaSalle on August 4, 1852. A personal friend of Abraham Lincoln, Alexander Campbell, was elected as LaSalle's first mayor. In those first years of an incorporated LaSalle, Mayor Campbell, who later became a U.S. congressman, had magistrate powers similar to those of a justice of the peace. The first railroad tracks built east to west within the county were laid as the Rock Island Railroad was carved through LaSalle in 1853. A year later, the Illinois Central Line opened north to south routes with the completion of a huge bridge over the Illinois River. The competing railroads became vital links between LaSalle and the rest of north central Illinois, providing both freight and passenger access throughout the Illinois Valley. Soon, other regional rail lines were built throughout the area, bringing even more new settlers and businesses to the growing river town. As expected, efficient train service immediately took business away from the adjacent i &M Canal. The waterway was abandoned in the early 1900s. In that pre-1850 era, coal was critical to the great industrial progress of the United States. The first coal dug in Illinois was outside LaSalle, around the Split Rock area adjacent to the i &M Canal. The first commercial coal mine shaft to be sunk in north-central Illinois became known as LaSalle Shaft, owned by the LaSalle County Carbon Coal Company. It was located near the vicinity of Canal and Union Streets. Historians of that time said the location of the coal mine was excellent. Chutes could send the coal directly to either the canal boats for shipping on the nearby Illinois-Michigan Canal or dumped into rail cars of the Rock Island and Illinois Central Railroads. Both rail lines were very close to the shaft. From that small facility in 1856, the LaSalle County Carbon Coal Company grew to employ 1,700 men and boys digging in five area coal mines in 1911. It ranked as one of the largest companies in the state at that time. The great abundance of coal and the convenient means of various transportation led to the establishment of many industries. 
Coal mining also brought new workers and their families, making possible numerous retail businesses to help build up LaSalle's downtown area. Among these new LaSalle residents were two young immigrants who came to LaSalle with a bold business plan in the late 1850s. Frederick Matheson and Edward Hegler, both brilliant mining engineers from Germany, chose LaSalle as the construction site for a zinc ore smelting plant. These newcomers realized that the Illinois Valley held the closest coal fields to the Wisconsin ore mines. The i &M Canal, the river, and the new Illinois Central and Rock Island railroads provided excellent transportation facilities, and the close proximity of Chicago guaranteed the new zinc works access to a worldwide market. The Matheson and Hegler Zinc Company quickly became a success, so much that LaSalle became known as Zinc City throughout the world. In 1881, M&H Zinc built the world's first sulfuric acid plant. Both the zinc works and sulfuric acid manufacturing operations ran continuously in LaSalle up to the 1960s. As LaSalle grew, its new citizens soon realized that an educational system should be started with the community. Prior to 1847, several private schools were being conducted in homes throughout the village. In 1854, Sister Vincentia and the Daughters of Charity began the St. Vincent School for Girls on 2nd Street. It was 1857 when the community established the LaSalle Public Elementary School District, whose territory included the entire township of LaSalle. At first, a number of different buildings and houses were rented for classes until LaSalle Elementary built its first school building on 3rd Street between Buckland and Wright. The year was 1859. In 1862, the Irish community and its St. Patrick's Parish opened up Brothers School. It was 1871. The LaSalle City High School was first established on 3rd Street between Hennepin and Tontai Streets. St. Hyacinth's Parish opened a school in a section of its church in 1875. In 1879, the Grant School was built to handle growing class sizes in LaSalle Elementary District. It was placed on 10th Street near Crozet. The St. Joseph School was founded in 1881 in a building south of the church on Hennepin Street. That school remained until 1924 when a new Catholic school was built on the southwest corner of 5th and Hennepin Streets. It was April 11, 1896 when LaSalle and its neighbor city, Peru, combined their high schools into the new LaSalle Peru Township High School. The school's first building, which came to be known as Old Main, was a three-story brick structure located on the northeast corner of 5th and Charter Streets. It opened for classes in 1898. Despite the overwhelming success of their zinc works, the civic-minded German industrialists Matheson and Hegler did not confine themselves to the day-to-day -day operations of that plant. Matheson was elected mayor of LaSalle in 1887. He served for 10 consecutive years as head of the village. During his tenure, he oversaw the construction of the first waterworks and sewer systems fighting special interest for municipal ownership of the important utilities. Matheson's philanthropic contributions to his adopted city and the surrounding area were numerous and far-reaching. He actually shared a vast amount of his wealth by donating hundreds of thousands of dollars to the development and formation of LaSalle Peru High School. Sensing an urgent need for improved medical facilities for the community, he also endowed $150,000 to start the Hygienic Institute for the well-being of his employees and their neighbors. Incorporated in 1917, the Hygienic Institute continues the dream of Matheson by providing quality health care for many persons in the Illinois Valley in modern-day LaSalle. The other LaSalle manufacturing partner, Edward Hegler, was not content with gaining worldwide notoriety for his bold innovations in sink production. Intrigued with philosophy and education, Hegler founded the Open Court Publishing Company in 1887. He felt that the Book Publishing Center could advance the free and full discussion of the religious, philosophical, and academic problems of the day. He founded Open Court, which continues to be a major influence in the publishing world today in the fields of philosophy, world religions, science, and some of the important issues of the day. In 1887, Edward Hegler also was to write a major chapter in history of LaSalle. 
That year, he was instrumental in bringing Dr. Paul Karras from Germany to become editor of Open Court Publishing. Shortly after moving here, Dr. Karras fell in love and married Hegler's daughter, Mary. A doctor of philosophy, the 36-year-old Karras propelled the young publishing company into one of the most prestigious philosophy institutions in the world. That tradition of publishing unique and thought-provoking manuscripts by open court continues by descendants of Dr. Karras, now in the year 2000. The company produces the popular monthly cricket magazine, as well as six other critically acclaimed children's magazines, along with children's books and educational publications. Dr. Paul and Mary Hegler Karras's son, Edward Hegler Karras, was born in LaSalle in 1890. The bright young man graduated from the University of Wisconsin in 1912 as a chemical engineer. He brought his expertise in that field back to his native LaSalle town when he founded the Karras Chemical Company in 1915. During its more than 85-year history, Karras Chemical has employed thousands of LaSalle residents and is the world's largest manufacturer of potassium permanganate. Today, Karras remains an industry leader in providing a wide range of chemical products and services for water and wastewater treatment, air purification, and other environmental applications. A new chapter of the Hegler Matheson Karras saga continues today as family members are currently overseeing a multi million dollar restoration of the Hegler Karras mansion on 7th Street in LaSalle. While Hegler spent time between the zinc plant and forming his new publishing company, his partner, Matheson, became fascinated by clocks, watches, and other timepieces. In the mid 1880s, he met Charles Stahlberg, a brilliant German mechanic who had moved to LaSalle from Waterbury, Connecticut. Stahlberg had a revolutionary idea for assembling accurate, low-price clock workings. The enterprising immigrant soon found solid financial backing for his process from the wealthy Matheson, and together they founded a clock manufacturing plant, the Western Clock Company. Without any expert clockmakers, which was unheard of at the time, 25 unskilled workers soon learned to quickly produce up to 50 wind-up alarm clocks per day. Convinced that a huge market was waiting for the unique timepieces, Matheson handpicked a talented management team to market the clocks. Soon, other stores began to sell the timepieces, and following several lean years, the commercial momentum that was pushed along by a wise marketing strategy ultimately made the company the world's largest manufacturer of alarm clocks. Patented in 1902, the company's first alarm clock, Big Ben, changed the time industry forever. It retailed for $2.50. That company evolved into the world-famous and mighty West Clocks Corporation. The clock company not only eventually employed tens of thousands over the years, but it also was instrumental in attracting other companies to the Illinois Valley area. Some of these new businesses supplied parts and materials to West Clocks, while others provided special services to the growing clock concern. In 